Hello and welcome. I'm Saeed from StoryPlanet.net. Dive right into the essence of the most captivating books without reading them cover to cover. Whether you're on the go, at the gym, or just relaxing at home, we offer you a unique and enriching listening experience. Today, we are exploring the book Headscarves and Hymens, a creation by Mona Eltahawi. Headscarves and Hymens, now 2015, explores the abuse faced by women in the Arab world and the efforts of feminist activists to combat it. The book highlights the oppression women endure, including child marriage and virginity tests, urging for a sexual revolution in Islamic countries. Before we delve into these revelations, it's interesting to note that Mona el an Egyptian-American journalist in New York City, focuses on Egyptian current events and broader Middle Eastern political and social issues. Her first book, Headscarves and Hymens, elaborates on her contentious 2012 Foreign Affairs article about Muslim men titled Why Do They Hate Us? With seven key ideas to unveil, brace yourself for a deep dive into this captivating book on storyplained.net. To start, the text is a call to raise awareness about the systemic oppression of women in Arab countries. Debate on veiling Arab women. Feminists see it as oppression, traditionalists as cultural tradition, and liberals stress respecting other cultures. The issue is part of wider women's rights challenges in Arab nations, facing misogyny, abuse justified by religion, and limited rights. The text explores the oppression Arab women face, the justification by religion and culture, and the emerging feminist movement working towards gender equality. Also covers differences between hijab and niqab, consequences for Saudi women not wearing veils, and the cultural acceptance of female genital mutilation in Arab countries. Key idea number one, Arab women face hostility and misogyny in their environments. The author highlights the rampant misogyny in Arabic-speaking regions due to ultra-conservative interpretations of Islam, leading to the control and abuse of women. This includes issues like child marriage, marital rape, and domestic violence, often justified through religious laws. The prevalence of such abuses has led to a lack of gender equality in Arab countries, with many facing severe discrimination. Key idea number two. Arab women and Western liberals often do not speak out against misogyny. The text discusses the silence and challenges faced by Arab women and Western liberals in addressing misogyny within Arab societies. Arab women often stay quiet to avoid embarrassment and external scrutiny, while Westerners tend to shy away from critiquing other cultures under the guise of cultural relativism. The author highlights the courage of Arab feminists who defy these norms and advocate for women's rights despite the obstacles they face. Key idea number three. Arab women often wear headscarves without much choice in the decision. Critics rarely delve into the origins of the veil in conservative Islamic societies where it symbolizes piety and modesty. Some wear it for religious reasons, while others view it as a means of freedom or protection from harassment. The author faced challenges when choosing to stop wearing the veil due to societal and family pressures. In some regions, not wearing a veil can lead to harsh consequences or social stigma. The practice of veiling is just one aspect of the oppression women face. Preserving a woman's hymen for her wedding night is considered to be more harmful in some Arab countries. Key idea number four. Arab girls undergo dangerous genital cutting to protect their virginity as it is considered sacred. Arab society places high value on a woman's virginity, often enforcing the idea through the policing of a girl's hymen before marriage. This cultural norm can lead to harmful practices like female genital mutilation, FGM, aimed at controlling girls' sexuality. FGM is a cultural, not religious, practice with severe physical and emotional consequences, including increased risk of health issues and even death. It is now recognized as a human rights violation by organizations like the United Nations and the World Health Organization. Key idea number five. Arab women experience sexual harassment and physical abuse in public and within their homes. 
Women in Arab countries face constant threats of abuse, including sexual harassment, lack of rights when facing abuse, forced marriages with rapists, police violence such as virginity tests, and domestic abuse due to laws that mainly protect men. Victims of abuse often lack legal protection and face blame for the violence they endure. Key idea number six, Arab feminists are leveraging the internet to connect with and empower other women, driving tangible impact. Arab women are confronting misogyny and pushing for change despite repression and violence. In some Arab nations following Sharia law, women face restrictions and are deemed unready for equal treatment in society. However, feminist activists are challenging these norms. In Saudi Arabia, women were traditionally banned from sports, but activism led to female participation in the Olympic team. Online campaigns and protests, like a woman driving a car, have gained momentum, showing that Arab women are ready and demanding change. Key idea number seven. Women have faced sexual violence during revolutionary movements. Feminist activism in the Middle East has a long history, dating back to 1923 with Egyptian feminist Huda Sha'arawi. Women in the region have faced sexual violence during protests, but organizations like Harasmap and Tahrir Bodyguard have worked to combat this issue. Addressing sexual violence requires societal change, including introducing sex education and challenging repressive laws. Everyone has a role to play in advocating for women's rights and social change. In conclusion, the book highlights the abuse and repression faced by women in Islamic countries and calls for equal rights. It emphasizes the importance of Arab women claiming their rights and Western support. Further reading on sexuality in Muslim countries is suggested, discussing taboos, censorship and gender discrimination. Thank you for listening to this summary. If you enjoyed this exploration, we invite you to discover other fascinating books on storyplanet.net. Don't wait any longer. A multitude of books, stories and knowledge await you there. See you soon on storyplanet.net.